last class we talked about a four quadrant converter AC to DC converter. So, the configuration we start with thyristor. So, let us see how the four quadrant converter looks like. you have the diode. So, this thyristor with this diode together it will act as, act as a bidirectional switch. So, we want both voltage and current to be current to be changed in both directions we require that is E 0, I 0. So, for the other side also we require, so we will put one more limb here. This is the configuration. So, we, we will be able to do the four quadrant operation, both the voltage and current can we can change it. See four quadrant operation both the voltage and current we can change it independent of each other. At the same time uh, see if you see here the load is connected here. This is the uh, waveform input side and this is the output side. This we are talking about DC to DC converter DC to DC. Okay. So, here this is the output, output we can have both positive and negative, current also we can have positive and negative. And previous uh, class we also studied about the PWM mode of operation. So, PWM mode we can have the E 0, we can control. So, we can control in such a way a sinusoid average sinusoid variation is possible from uh, possible here E 0 side. Okay. This is possible. Now, if that is possible, can we have a sinusoidal output voltage? We can have a sinusoidal output voltage like this. If the sinusoidal output voltage is possible, we can also have a sinusoidal output current. So, voltage and current depending on the load, current may be leading, current may be lagging. Uh, for inductive load. So, by proper control can we have a uh, unity power factor also like this? Okay, it is possible. We will see that one. Then see so this uh, previously we talked about front end converters AC to DC converters. Now, here if you see here, if you see here this E 0 with the PWM control E 0, we are changing in a uh, we are uh, PWM control we are fund with the fundamental is uh, we are making as the average value we are varying at as a sinusoidal way. Okay. So, here now this is the current with the unity power factor. Then the question is can we use this configuration uh, for an AC to DC converter with the unity power factor? See, now the power flow can go from source to load as well as load to the source. Then the same thing we can use it for a AC to DC converter with the unity power factor. Now, for PWM control, why we require PWM? We want PWM so that uh, harmonics shifted to the high frequency side. We will come to that one soon. So, this configuration we can use it for an AC to DC converter with unity power factor. So, instead of thyristor, we will be talking about here for high frequency PWM we require. So, we can use instead of thyristor, we, we can use uh, IGBTs or MOSFET because thyristor require a force commutation that we have not shown here. This thyristor require a force commutation. So, extra circuit is required that we are not talking about that one. Now, another thing is these two limbs, this limb and this one A and B. 
okay. This is 1 lakh, A lakh, this is B lakh. These are independent of each other. See that means the switching of A is not dependent on B. So, it can be independent. So, B side we have introduced to have a negative voltage and current here in the that means you want to generate you want to run the system in all four quadrant operation. Now, let us talk about the PWM operation now AC to DC converter. So, how an AC to DC converter with the unity power factor what we want? We will come to that one now. Let us go to the uh, next slide now. AC to DC converter with the unity power factor. converter with unity power factor. Power factor. Okay. The circuit. Now, AC to DC. So, let us see this is our AC side. Okay. Then as before, you have high inductances there to drop the ripple voltage, to drop the ripple voltage and also to reduce the ripple current, okay. Then so here I will use each limb as switch IGBT or MOSFET you can use it. So I will uh, show it as a symbol. Uh, uh, switch with the freewheeling diode, okay. Freewheeling diode also required. Okay, this is connected here. This side will go. A, B, okay, and you have the DC set, the capacitor here. This is our E0. This is input, our single phase AC, P, E, okay. This is inductance L. Now, we are using PWM here, such that across A B there is a fundamental voltage P W there is a fundamental voltage and the other uh, frequencies P W M voltage we will come to that one say. So, but for the analysis uh, due to with the P W M uh, uh, P W M switching for leg A and leg B there will be a resultant fundamental A B voltage which is we will be controlling. So, for unity power factor how we have to control such that we get unity power factor. So, let us say this is our V in. V in. And let us say this is our I in. I in probably we will mark with a different color. So, I in. So, I in has to be in phase with V in unity power factor. So, this is I in, okay. So, this I in flowing through L, it will have a drop drop across the inductance and what is the drop? The dro that drop will be L omega into I in, the peak value of we are trying to draw the phasor diagram, the peak value of this current. Now, this VAB fundamental AB will be, so this voltage will be perpendicular to this will be perpendicular to this will be equal to this. Uh, this perpendicular to V in the drop across the inductance that is L omega into 
I in. So, the VAB fundamental will be here, this is the VAB, VAB fundamental, okay. This is when the power flow from this side to that is a source side to the uh, DC output side. Now, when the power is reversed, how will that happen? The phasor diagram. So, again, we will draw it here. This is V in, this is our V in again. Power reversal with the unity power factor means I in has to be in this direction. So, I, I in we can draw with a different color now. This is your I in. I in phase it. And the V in will be in this direction. J omega here it will be in this direction. So, this is V A B. This vector will be L omega I in. Omega is the mains frequency. So, if you see this is for power here V into I n is negative. V in I will be power will be flowing in the other side that is from DC side to AC side. Here in this case it is going from AC to DC. So, if you take with the unity power factor as the power for a uh, fixed I in the movement of V A B will be along this direction for forward as well as reverse power flow, okay. Now, as I in varies, I in varies, V will also varies, I in magnitude varies. So, I in magnitude depends on the load connected across E 0. So, we have to control V A B for any load, any load that means lo what is mean by load here, we are a DC here output DC current. So, for that DC current E 0 into I 0 current output uh, DC current there is a power that power has to be much uh, taken from the input current input source that is V in into I in. So, I in will be connected I in will be related to the output uh, load DC current. So, depending on the load I in will vary. So, for particular I in for forward or reverse power flow V A B has to be moved along this direction. So, we have to control the PWM such that the V A B moves along this direction for unity power flow. So, how do you do that one? That is more important. So, as I told before we are using PWM operation. So, let us talk about the PWM. In PWM how you can control the V A B, fundamental V A B amplitude, okay. And uh, also I told previously these two legs are independent of each other we can control independently. So, how do you do that one? So, let us take only this part now, that is a converter alone and study the PWM. So, let us go to the next slide now. We will talk about the converter part and how we do the PWM. So, the inputs, the output voltage E 0, I will divide into two, uh, two values of E 0 by 2. E 0 by 2 and this also E 0 by 2, okay E 0 by 2. So, this way we will do it. Now, we have the switch here. Okay, we have the freewheeling diode here. this is our A, okay. Now, other limb we are not, uh, we are not uh, talking about now because uh, what we can do for A the same th thing can will be applied to B leg also. Now, see even though the output uh, is not divided uh, with uh, uh, divided as E 0 by 2, E 0 by 2, I have divided for analysis I have divided into E 0 by 2, but the total output DC is still E 0. Now, let us take a condition when S 1 is on. S 1 is on what is the voltage at A? The voltage at A means we have to 
measure the voltage with respect to a fixed point. So, what we will do? We will measure with respect to the fictitious center of E0. Here we represent as it as O. This point will mark as O. That means only thing we have to measure the voltage with respect to a common reference point. The reference point is O. That is the that is a fictitious. It is not there for analysis we are doing it at the center part of the output E0 voltage E0. When switch top switch is on that is I will make this one as S1 this one as S2. When the top switch is on the voltage A with respect to 0 this will say pole voltage V A0 is equal to V A0 is equal to sorry E0 by 2. We will assume the switchings are instantaneous. When S1 is off and S2 is on, when S2 is on V A0 will be minus E0 by 2. V A0 is equal to minus E0 by 2. In this case, we are turning S1 on. In the second case, here S2 on. Now, PWM operation, we have to switch on S1 and S2 such that the average variation at point A with respect to O should vary sinusoidally. So, how do you do that one? Here we will use a uh, sine triangle PWM technique. So, now we will let us go to the sine triangle PWM. In sine triangle PWM, what we will do? The sine wave we are comparing with the fixed triangular uh, waveform, waveform of high frequency. And the sine wave is the fundamental wave what we want, the reference wave. Let us take a typical example how the sine triangle PWM we are comparing. This is the V A 0 we want. So, we generate the V A 0. Okay. This V A 0 will be compared with a fixed triangular triangle waveform of fixed amplitude and fixed frequency. So, let us take a triangle waveform. Maybe triangle waveform we will draw with a different color so that clarity will be more. This is our triangle waveform. This we can generate with uh, in an analog circuit or a microcontroller or in DSP. This generation of this sine triangle waveform is not that difficult. But only thing is the triangle frequency is much higher than the sine frequency. Why we do that one? So that the harmonic frequency, you will know how the harmonics are generated. The high amplitude harmonics will be shifted to the high frequency side which is the frequency of the triangle waveform. So, high frequency amplitude, uh, high, fre uh, high amplitude uh, harmonics are shifted to the high frequency side that is at the triangle side. Then the impedance for this harmonics L omega will increase and the current ripple drawn from the mains will decrease. So, the current will be as close as to a sinusoidal wave, it will happen that way. Okay. So, this is the thing. 
so we will call this waveform the modulating wave that is our reference sine wave and the triangle wave we call as carrier wave that is VCT. VCT. The amplitude of that one V is equal to VC. Okay. Now, as I told, whenever the sign is greater than the triangle waveform, whenever the triangle is greater than the sorry, whenever the sign is greater than the triangle, we will be switching the top switch on. Top switch is on means the V A 0 will be V D C by 2. So, now let us use a different color so that it will be like this. This point that is from this point to this one V D C by 2. Then when the triangle is greater than the sine wave, it will be minus V D C by 2. So, as we go along the sine triangle comparison for full one cycle of sine wave, the output waveform PWM pulse width modulated, PWM pulse width modulated V A 0 will be like this. See, when it comes to the center, the V D C, the plus V D C by 2 is more and the minus V D C by 2 is the width of minus V D C by 2 is smaller. So, you can see the average value, if you see this average value will be varying sinusoidally. So, we will study that one, is it uh, following the sinusoidal way and we also want the output should be proportional to the our VMD modulating wave, that is our reference wave. So, how we can control the output V A 0 fundamental with respect to our modulating wave? We will study now. Let, we, let us complete this one. So, negative side it will happen this way. So, this way we will get the PWM waveform. So, if you see here the positive portion from here to here, this will be sorry E 0 by 2 and this side will be minus E 0 by 2. Okay. Oh, there is a I will just remove this one sorry. So, I will rewrite this one for clarity. So, this will be plus E 0, E 0 by 2 and below it is minus E 0 by 2. So, you will get this type of PWM waveform and the average waveform, the average waveform will be proportional to our VMT. This we will check now. So, but this average variation will be proportional to our VMT. Now, let us, let us check whether this average variation is proportional to VMT. If it is proportional to VMT, the moment VMT amplitude we reduce, the average variation amplitude also will reduce. The VMT, if we can shift it with respect to slightly shift it with respect to sign triangle waveform, again the average variation at the VA0 will also shift. Let us see whether it is true. So, uh, what I stated now, the by using this PWM, uh, sign triangle PWM, by switching the uh, top switch and uh, bottom switch with respect to the uh, sign uh, compared with the uh, uh, triangle, we get a PWM waveform which I shown here pulse width waveform like this. The average variation will, will vary sinusoidally and proportional to VMT. Let us see whether it is proportional to VMT. One assumption also we made, we will uh, we'll make it the frequency of the triangle waveform is very high compared to sine wave. Why that is required that assumption? Let us take a one triangle period, one triangle period, see triangle 
which is going from negative maximum to 0 and then positive maximum and comes back. Okay, this one. So, if you see here, one triangle period we call as the carrier period. So, when the triangle go, goes from minus negative to positive, this duration is equal to Tc by 2, half carrier period. Okay. Similarly, here also Tc by 2, half carrier period. Now, we are coming during one triangle period, any triangle, we are just expanded here, we are comparing uh, one portion of a sine wave with respect to the triangle. Now, we will assume during this one carrier period, that is starting from here to here, Tc we will assume the frequency of the triangle waveform. We will assume the frequency of the triangle waveform is so high during this period. The variation of the sinusoidal waveform, that part of the sinusoidal waveform during this period is uh, constant. It is not varying much. So, for analysis, we can assume we are comparing the part of the sine wave here. See, assuming high frequency. So, See, this is our sine wave amplitude during one triangle period. What we said here, the frequency of, I will write here, see of triangle or carrier, triangle is higher than the than the sine waveform sine wave that is the modulating wave see so, modulating and carrier this terminology we borrowed from the communication paper modulating modulating, uh, modulating, oh sorry, it has gone to the other side, modulating wave, okay, modulating wave. So, how much time? Typically, 9 times for 11 times Seventeen times, twenty-one times. I am talking about the frequency of the triangle wave with respect to the uh, modulating sine wave. So that during a sampling period, oh sorry, during a carrier period, that is one triangle period, the sinusoidal waveform, that part of the sinusoid which is uh, compared with the uh, uh, triangle wave during that period is nearly constant. So, now as I told, whenever the sin is greater than the triangle, S1 is on, the top switch is on, when uh, that is, this is our with the diode, we will mark it for clarity here. this is S1, this is S2. So, whenever the sine is greater than the triangle top switch is on. So, during this portion, S1 is on, this is S1 here, S1 on from here to here. Also, when during the negative slope of the triangle from here to this period, that is 
here also S1 only. Okay. And during this period, when the triangle is greater than the sine wave, here S2 or this period. Now, what we want to find out? Same like in SMPS, see if you see here, suppose you have a 10 volt, you want a 5 volt, how do you, you use it? using a chopper for in a period part of the time you will be switching on the device so that the output input voltage of 10 volt will come across a lot and rest of the period it will be 0. So, if you see here, so you want a 10 volt so we will be doing like this, you will be turning it the device for uh, half the period or half the period you will be switch off. So, the output will be 0 to 10 during this period and rest of the period it will be 0. So, the average value will be 5 volt that is how you generate 5 volt here using volt second that means volt second means 10 into T on this is T on divided by total period will be equal to 5 volt if T1 is half of T, if T1 is uh, 25 percent of uh, T means the output voltage will be 25 percent of 10 volts, okay, that is 2.5. So, by varying the T1 period, we can vary the output voltage here. The same way here, we are trying to turn on the device here. S2 is turned on during this period, S1 is turned on this period and S1 is turned on period. So, same like our previous SMBS case, we should we should find out what is the volt second or the average value from the volt second average value during one sampling period. Okay. What is the purpose? We want to find out this average value is it proportional to the VMT part of that sine wave during that period. So, that is what we want to find out now. Let us take S1 on period, the volt second during S1 on period. Now, let us see find out the volt second during one triangle period and find out the average value during a triangle period. See, if you see here, when S1 is on, so this slope if you take from here to here. the slope it will go minus V c to V c. So, total this height is that is I would say O here O to P sorry P here that is this height. So, from this point to the vertical height O to P that is this point is to V c to V c. Okay. So, when the vertical height goes to 2 V c, what is the x axis? x axis is equal to T c by 2. Okay. So, for 2 V c it is T c by 2. Then what is for this height? This height is V c plus V m. V m we are measuring from the 0 uh, that 0 side uh, from the 0 axis side the 0 voltage level. So, this much distance if you see here this is V m. This is V m. Okay. This is equal to V m during that period and from here to the midpoint here midpoint of the vertical height is equal to V c. So, for 2 V c the period is equal to T c T c by 2. Then what is the period? That is to find out the period from here to here S 1 0 from this period we are finding out this period from here to here. What is the period is equal to? So, T c by 2 
for 2 vc it is tc by 2 then what is for vc plus vmt vmt at that instant that is the amplitude of the sine wave during this portion vs0 during this period vs0 sorry v, during this we are talking about the vs0 during that period it is equal to vdc by 2 okay but if you see here the during this period also s1 is 1 from here to here and this period and this period because of the symmetry of the waveform and assuming the amplitude of the sine wave is constant this period from here to here and this period from here to here the both on periods are equal so the total on period is equal to 2 times tc by 2 okay now during the s2 on period the output voltage will be so what is the total area volt second so this period multiplied by vdc2 by e is the uh, total uh, uh, volt second during on period so s1 on the volt second that is voltage into time is equal to when they multiply to these two and these two get cancelled so tc into tc into vc plus vmt divided by 2 vc into oh sorry not it our notation is not vdc it is e0 sorry e0 by 2 so this is e0 by 2 so here also it is you have to write e0 by 2 here it will be into this is the volt second e0 by 2 then what will happen when s2 is on s2 is on the time period is this is during s1 is on this period so tc minus this period will give that is the period where s1 is on that is this period will give the s2 on period so s2 on one is equal to total tc minus tc so here let us see if clarity i will remove the this diagram so you have more clarity here so s2 on period so tc minus and tc minus that is the total carrier period triangle period minus the on period of uh, s1 on period that is what we got tc into vc plus vmt that is the vmt is the uh, sine amplitude during the triangle period during the comparison under consideration now vmt divided by 2 vc okay and this is the s2 one period now the volts volt second multiplied by minus e0 by 2 so for clarity let us go to the next page i have redrawn the sine triangle comparison during one sampling period now we know the volt second volt second when s1 on whole second when s1 on is we got it that is tc into vc plus vmt divided by 2 vc the whole multiplied by 
is 0 by 2 whole second S 1 naught. Now, what is the whole second during S 2 1? The period, uh, period uh, the time period uh, during which S 2 is on multiplied by minus V D C by 2. We know that when S 2 is on, when the triangle is greater than the sine wave that is here during this portion. So, the S 2 will be on, the output voltage V 0 will be minus V D C by 2. So, what is the S 2 1 period? S 2 1 period is very easy to find out. We know the S 1 1 period, P C minus that one. So, S 2 1 is equal to T C minus T C into V C plus V M T divided by 2 V C. Okay. This is the S 2 1 period multiplied by minus E 0 by 2 will give the volt second. So, the volt second during S 2 1 when S 2 1 is equal to T C minus T C into V C plus V M T. V M T is a function of time and that is at which uh, triangle period we are sampling that is why we have put as a function of time divided by 2 V C whole multiplied by minus E 0 by 2. Now, the average value is the summation of these two volts second divided by T C. So, V S 0 average for a period T 0 I can write it here so that it will be clear. V S 0 average total volt second divided by T C is equal to total volt second divided by T C one triangle period that is average value. So, how it will be if you sum these two and multiply if you see it will be equal to 1 by T C that is average value into T C by 2 plus T C into V M T divided by 2 V C then minus T C by 2 plus T C into V M T divided by 2 V C we are taken care of the uh, positive and negative multiplied by E 0 by 2. Here I will write the E 0 by 2. So, this will be. So, if you see here T C by 2, T C by 2 get cancelled. So, if I use a different color, this one, this one get cancelled. Then the whole V S 0 average, I will write it here, V S 0 average value of V S 0 during a sampling period, uh, sorry during a uh, sampling period means during the triangle period, during the period T C, during the, during a period period T C is equal to V S your average will be equal to from these two equation it will be E 0 by 2 into the value of sin wave at that instant divided by V C. V C is the carrier period. So, if you see the average value will vary when V M T vary because these two rest of the periods are constant. 
So during assuming high frequency sine triangle PWM such that during a triangle period the sine amplitude is not varying, we are assuming constant. So that is why uh, we said high, um, uh, high frequency uh, PWM such that during sine triangle PWM the average value of the uh, output VSU or PWM waveform will be proportional to VMT. Okay. So, to control the VMT or control the average average value, VS0 average, you vary the VMT amplitude. So, it will be proportionally varied. Now, this way we will be controlling. Now, the same way, this is for leg A, the same way we can control the leg B also. So, that is VB0. So, finally, what is the AB? VAB will be equal to VAB will be equal to VA0 minus VB0, if you refer the previous uh, figure that is here. So, the voltage VAB, we are independently controlling VA0, A0 means the 0 with respect to the uh, fictitious center point of this power supply. So, VA0 minus VB0 will give VAB. So, we have to generate the reference v, uh, waveform VAB such that we get unity power factor unity power factor as I shown here. So, VAB has to be moved in this direction. Sorry, in the, the tip of the VAB should be moved in this direction depending on IA such that unity power factor we will get. Now, see average value we got. Now, we went for the uh, high frequency PWM, sine triangle PWM. How about the harmonics? See, if you analyze this one uh, through Fourier series, it is highly it will get into lot of complication, but a simple way we can analyze how the harmonics, uh, how the harmonics are present during a, a sine triangle PWM. See this uh, I am taking from a famous book by Professor Netmohan. So, here we can analyze that one. Now, see sine triangle PWM as I told is the fundamental waveform, the average waveform is proportional to VMT, our sine wave or whatever the waveform you are uh, trying to compare with the triangle waveform. Now, the ha ne where is the next higher order harmonics? Because the output waveform is a pulse width modulated waveform, pulse width modulated waveform that is what we have uh, shown before. So, and we have talked only about the fundamental. So, apart from the fundamental it has the harmonics. This harmonics will be the high amplitude harmonics will be shifted to the triangular frequency. So, the advantage is if you use a high frequency triangle waveform, if possible, if your power converter permits, the next high amplitude harmonics will be at the triangular frequency. So, the current drawn due to this harmonic voltage will be much less because of the L omega, omega V is more, harmonic that is amplitude is that the frequency of that one depends on the triangular frequency. So, L omega will be higher, the current drawn due to that harmonic. Uh, harmonic will be much less. So, the ripple current is much lower and output you will get nearly sinusoidal current. So, in the next class we will study briefly a simple thumb rule for a sine triangle how the harmonics are placed. Now, then for our front end AC to DC converter how do you use the PWM such that some of the higher harmonics can be suppressed. So, the as higher harmonics are suppressed the current drawn from the mains or the AC side will be more sinusoidal with the unity power factor. That is what we want. That we will talk in the next class.